Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. This is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio. I'm here live with James Jacob Prash. Uh, Jacob, we got a letter in Morial TV. Now, I've went to parochial school. I'm not sure if you have. I got a pretty good education, but a mother, Ramona, uh, writes us saying that they, they've enrolled their daughter in a, in a private Catholic school, and she has some big concerns there. Um, and she's wondering if they're sinning by having them participate with the required weekly masses. We did not opt our, opt our daughter into reconciliation. She wasn't baptized Catholic anyway. The cost of the Catholic school is much less than other private school options. I had a former Catholic non-denominational Christian recently tell me it would be better to put them in a public school than continue with the Catholic school. I would appreciate feedback on this. Thank you, and God bless, Ramona. God bless you, Ramona, and thank you for your question. First of all, just by way of broad background, let's talk a little bit about Roman Catholic education in the United States. We have to draw a distinction between Roman Catholic higher education and ordinary schools, okay? There's a distinction. Also, because religious orders are disappearing. They have a geriatric constituency now of very old nuns who are checking out or very old brothers or whatever they are. They're having to use non-clergy as teachers now in Catholic schools. So they're not the same as they once were most of the time. Although the potential risk of child abuse by a priest does exist, <laughs> particularly if they take their children to confession and things like this, where children could conceivably be the victims of sexual blackmail by priests, telling them their sins, there's still going to be that risk and that danger. Nonetheless, the Catholic school system was founded by a Jesuit philosophy, give us a child to the age of seven and he's ours for life. They believed that they could spiritually and psychologically control people by indoctrinating them with catechism and other things, and make them loyal to the Catholic Church into adult life until they die, and they won't listen to anything else. It was something that was invented, instituted, to stop the spread of the gospel after the Protestant Reformation, not that the Reformation was always a bargain. Now, Catholic education existed before the Reformation to a degree, but after the Reformation, it became a way to keep Catholic countries Catholic. This comes to the United States, and it takes off with the great immigration, where you had Italians, Polish, Irish, Hispanics, people from Catholic countries coming, and there was a fear that they would assimilate into the mainstream Protestant culture, and in some cases, evangelicism. So it fulfills the same function. But with the decline of religious vocations, as Catholics call it, Catholic schools are very different now. They're essentially private schools using teachers who are not priests or nuns or brothers or something like this, although the principal may be. But the essential ingredients are still there. In higher education, universities like Georgetown and Notre Dame and Boston College, these places have given accommodation to the homosexual and lesbian agenda and all kinds of other things that are officially at odds with Roman Catholic dogma. It's amazing. That shows you how far they've gone from their origins and their roots. Essentially, the American education system 
similar to the one that existed in Ireland with Trinity College or in Great Britain was discriminatory against non-Protestants and often just against non-Anglicans. Um, therefore, Catholics had to have their own university systems. This comes to the United States, where upward mobility economically for the Catholic immigrant population, beginning with the Irish, but then including Italians, Polish, Lithuanians, etc., and of course then Hispanics uh, and, and Haitians and so forth, it was seen as important as having their own school system. But that's no longer the case anymore. That's just the origin of it. You're dealing with a very different kind of Catholic school system than the one you may be familiar with from your own youth. Bear in mind, it's different now. But it's still Roman Catholic, and it still has its dangers. Because the public school system, as it's known in America, in Britain, public school is a private school. It's confusing. But the public, that is the state school system in America, is so bad. And the teachers' unions are basically a political campaign fund for the Democratic Party. Uh, it's so, they're so bad, and results get worse and worse. People look to private education, and Catholic schools seem to be a more affordable option. So there's an economic motive in families like yourself. I understand that. This is what I would specifically recommend to you, Ramona. This is what I would recommend. First of all, you pray about it. It's not, thus saith Jacob. This is what Jacob said. You've got to listen to the Lord. I'm only giving you what I hope is sanctified advice. <laughs> Ultimately, you have to hear from the Lord. If the Lord tells you to take your kids out of that school completely, you listen to the Lord. But if I were in your position, this is what I would advise. Now, I wouldn't, actually, I wouldn't be in your position. I wouldn't put my kids in the Roman Catholic school for anything. But this is what I would advise. Go to the principal. Go to the school and say, we want to have our children in this school not for any religious reasons, purely for academic reasons, because it's an affordable alternative to public education. Our children are here purely for academic reasons because it's an affordable alternative to the deteriorating state of the public school systems in most cases. We are not of the Roman Catholic faith. We have our own beliefs. Is there a way, please, that we can opt our children out of Roman Catholic religious liturgies, ceremonies, sacraments. We don't want our children going to mass, stations of the cross, confession, novenas, rosaries. We would like to have our children opted out of that. Send them to a library with some school work, some academic work to do or something. But is it possible to have our children opted out of it? Now, I know cases where there were actually Jewish children in, in, in Catholic or other schools where they were allowed to opt the children out. Just say we have a separate faith. This is not our beliefs. We are not against Catholic people, but we do not share Roman Catholic beliefs, and we would like to have our children opted out. Treat that as it were a kind of a fleece. If they say to you, we can opt your children out, we'll send them to the library or something like this, they will not have to attend the Mass or sacraments or pray the rosary, or go to the Stations of the Cross, or any of this, or have any catechetical instruction, Roman Catholic Catechism. If they allow you to opt your children out, then you can look at keeping them there as God's provision. If they require your children participate in these Roman Catholic rituals, and be indoctrinated with Roman Catholic dogma, that is catechism, then I would absolutely mandate that you get your children out of there and not send the other ones to it. That is my best advice in your circumstances. Now, 
prayer comes first. Maybe the Lord would provide the financial resources for you to send your children to an evangelical school. Not that all evangelical schools are good. Some are good, some aren't. Another option you might want to pray about is, particularly if you yourself are a college university graduate, we did this when our children were younger, and then we sent them to a private school later on. There are curriculums like ACE and things like this, ACE and things like this, you can find that online, that are scripturally based and academically quite good. And if the program is followed correctly, the children do well in competitive exams. Uh, you might want to consider homeschooling as another option if you can't afford an evangelical school or if there's not a good evangelical school near you. There are alternatives. But where I would begin is with prayer. Ask the Lord to show you. Remember, a Catholic school, just because it's a Catholic school, is never ideal. But it might be the best option for you. I don't know where you live or what your circumstances are. Bearing in mind, evangelical schools or homeschools, homeschooling could be alternatives. But I would go to the principal and see if there is an opt-out or an option to exempt your children from any Roman Catholic religious activity or indoctrination. If the answer to that is no, I would absolutely get them out. Even if I had to homeschool, I wouldn't do it. Now, I don't know your circumstances. You may need to work to help support the family. You can't homeschool. I can't make that judgment. I don't know you or your husband or your circumstances. Uh, but there is another complication in your unique situation. Because your husband is not saved yet, you are the spiritual head of the family. You do not have a Christian husband who shares your values. So I can't speak to that. Would he be supportive of paying more money to an evangelical school? Would he be supportive of homeschooling? It's very complicated when you're married to a non-believer. Again, I don't know your circumstances. Pray and ask the Lord to show you. Evangelical school homeschool, Catholic school, public school. One thing I can tell you, no matter how complex or complicated or no matter how many factors there are in an equation, one of the benefits of being a believer is this. We can always reduce things to a simple question. Jesus, what do you want me to do? What is best for me to do for my children in your eyes? Scriptures tell us, commit your way to the Lord or commit your plans to the Lord, your way to the Lord, and your plans will be established. He will show you what to do. That's why I emphasize, begin with prayer. He will show you what to do. You sincerely ask him with a sincere heart, sincerely determined to do his will, he will show you. And it will not be confused or ambiguous. You'll know it's him. Different people can be telling you different things. Trust him to show you. That's where you begin. Next thing, just see if staying in the Catholic school is an option. Make sure that your children will not be subjected to the idolatry and to the indoctrination of catechism. If they are, it's not an option. You can rule it out. Then you've got to look at private school, evangelical school, or homeschool. But commit your way to the Lord, Ramona, and your plans will be established. Again, without knowing you or your circumstances, it's the best I can advise you. It would be really good if you had a local church with a good pastor and his wife, preferably people who've raised their own children already, who could offer you some encouragement, counsel, support, whatever. I can't do that, obviously, by this modality. But if you had a good church with a good pastor, it would certainly help. Anyway, may the Lord guide you and direct you.
And if you ask him to, he will. Thank you so much for your question, Ramona. God bless. Thank you, Jacob. Did I have- Thank you.